Hello viewers, welcome to our Lighten Lens show. I'm Nahar Khan, reporting from United News of Bangladesh. We're finding ourselves in unprecedented times during the COVID-19 pandemic. And to discuss Canada's response to COVID-19 and other humanitarian challenges, we are joined today by the Honourable Minister of International Development of Canada, Ms. Corinna Gold. Minister Gold, I extend you a very warm welcome to our program. Thank you very much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Minister, Canada has been very prompt and generous in its response to global needs arising out of COVID-19 and remains engaged in the world as a leader in international aid. Can you briefly elaborate some of these measures at the global stage? Yeah, absolutely. So um, at the beginning of April, I was pleased to announce Canada's initial response to the COVID-19 crisis by announcing $159.5 million uh, to respond to both the humanitarian needs as well as a vaccine development because we know that one of the um, key interventions for the world will be the vaccine. So of that initial $159.5 million, $84.5 million uh, was for the humanitarian response, primarily going through UN agencies and the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Um, then we also announced $4 million coalition of evidence innovation, which is currently coordinating the global um, research and development uh, for a vaccine. Um, and then we also announced $30 million uh, to respond to the all around the world. Um, this is in addition to, you know, our doing, and we're looking at areas where it makes sense to pivot to respond to COVID-19. But then we also recognize that it's important to stay the course on a lot of our development because just because COVID doesn't mean that challenges will be back and exacerbated. And so last month, I was really pleased to announce Canada's contribution to Gavi, which is the Global Vaccine Alliance, which vaccinates, um, you know, hundreds of millions of children every year throughout the world against uh, childhood diseases like typhoid and diarrhea and measles, um, as well as global polio eradication initiative. Because we are very, very close to having eradicated polio around the world. And so we want to make sure that diseases like polio don't see resurgence because, uh, you know, children aren't having access to Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the, the Gavi Summit just um, took place not too long ago virtually. And, uh, you know, we saw many leaders congregate together. And um, um, suffice to say, it was a successful um, congregation at a distance. Yes. Well, we are just like you and I are chatting virtually right now. So two are world leaders, and I think we were all really encouraged and pleased by the by the um, vaccine summit that took place uh, on June fourth. And um, we're really pleased that our prime minister could participate, but a whole host of world leaders really, you know, um, reinforcing our commitment uh, to important health interventions uh, to make sure. That we continue to you know work through work towards these development goals in agenda 2030 and really you know achieve um, healthcare access for for everyone mr bangladesh and canada have been very close um development cooperation partners dating back to bangladesh's inception five decades ago this is widely viewed as an excellent paradigm of cooperation between a developed and a developing country uh, what are some of your specific programs for Bangladesh to combat the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, so that's a, a really good question. And it's been, as you said, it's really important because Canada and Bangladesh have a very long-standing relationship and deep friendship, and we work on development uh, in Bangladesh for a very, very long time. And so of those uh, $30 million that um, I spoke of that are for bilateral assistance. Two million of that is going to uh, Bangladesh. So five hundred thousand dollars is going to top up the agreement that we have with the Bangladesh Rural Advancement Committee um, for COVID nineteen response in Kasar and host communities uh, surrounding um, surrounding it. Uh, and then one half million dollars is going to top up with the 
at International Centre for Diarrheal Disease Research, Bangladesh, uh, to support national surveillance and labs for testing, because we know one of the most important strategies to help contain the spread of the virus is to make sure that there's adequate testing, but that requires laboratory capacity as well. And so um, in addition to the existing programming that we have, uh, we've provided an initial top up to try and assist uh, both with testing um, and laboratory capacity throughout the country, and then a specific uh, top up for um, the, the refugee camps in Cox's Bazar. Minister, Canada has stood by Bangladesh on the Rohingya refugee crisis since its beginning. Do you have a plan designed for the Rohingya? Um, there has been much debate around the ideas of repatriation or integration. So on a broader level, what are Canada's views with regard to the solution of the Rohingya crisis? Well, I mean, at this point, we, you know, we are grateful for Bangladesh for being so welcoming uh, with the Rohingya and recognize, you know, the extraordinary efforts that Bangladesh has taken. Um, of course, you know, we may be preoccupied with the situation and Canada is has signed on to Gambia's uh, case at the ICJ, uh, you know, and the Canadian Parliament unanimously approved a motion recognizing that the crime committed against the Rohingya in Myanmar constitutes genocide. And so we remain committed to working with all parties um, to, you know, provide a, a peaceful solution uh, to this crisis, but also recognizing, you know, the important rights of the Rohingya people. Um, and, you know, we, as you mentioned, have, have been there right from the beginning. Canada has provided um, about $88 million in humanitarian assistance funding for uh, the, the Rohingya refugees. And we've also provided uh, about $82 million in direct assistance to the communities around Cox's Bazaar, recognizing that you know, it's important to support them at the same time. Um, but we do remain committed to a political solution um, and Canada will continue to be a strong voice uh, standing up for the human rights of the Rohingya people uh, and, you know, ensuring that the international community continues to play an important role and that we can, um, you know, see, um, see the Rohingya living uh, in, in peace and security. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Gold, for taking the time to speak with us today at United News of Bangladesh and for the continued support that Bangladesh has received from Canada. Thank you so much. Thank you.